Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And in today's video, I'm going to be using some colored pencils on vellum, along with one of the newest club kits from Spellbinders to create a quick and easy card. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to create and find out more. Each month, Spellbinder sends me a couple of their club kits to use and share with you here on my channel. I get the clear stamp and die of the month and the new stencil of the month. This month's stencil club is called Spring Stencils Background and it includes four large stencils and then the circle mask. This is going to be great to create upcoming spring floral cards, or you could use it with different colors and make it year round. The stamp of the month is called Lily Arch, and I also have the coordinating dies that cut out the arch as well as each of the sentiments. And this is the club that I'll be using today. My video is just one of many today that will be shared in a special hop hosted by Lynn of LV Handcrafted here on YouTube. We will all be sharing a look at different clubs from this month and then creating something new and sharing it with you. To see the next person on the hop, check out that link at the very top of my description box. You can also click on the hashtag in the title to see them all, or I have everybody linked in the description box as well. I know that each one of them would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. As I get into my process, I will tell you about the other products and tools that I use today. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started by stamping that beautiful lily arch onto a scrap of vellum using stays on jet black ink. With a non-porous surface like vellum, you do need to make sure that your ink is going to stick. You could also heat emboss it if your heat gun won't ruin your vellum that you have. I placed the stamp just in the center of the vellum and I got it inked up nice and well. I wanted to make sure that it would stamp clearly the first time because it seems like no matter what you do, the vellum always pulls up with the stamp when you stamp with stays on. I set that piece to the side and now I'm going to create a little cloudy background for it. I cut down a piece of white cardstock to 3 and 3 quarters by 5 inches and I will be using a cloud edger stencil from my stash along with cotton candy ink from Tailored Expressions and my blue blending brush. Once I had my piece of white cardstock tacked down onto my surface, I started blending the sky. And to do this, I just rotated the clouds and try to keep my blending brush right along that edge. I did kind of flip it and rotate it and angle it in different ways until this piece of cardstock was completely filled. You'll see at the bottom to finish it off, I just used my brush without the cloud edger. To color my image, which I will be coloring onto the vellum, I am using my Arteza watercolor pencils along with a colored pencil blender pen. Now even though I'm using watercolor pencils, I did test on my vellum and this technique also worked with my regular colored pencils. I'm going to keep this card monochromatic so I got out a dark purple and that is the only color that I'll be using. To soften the coloring, I am going to flip my stamped piece over so the ink is now on the bottom and I'm coloring onto the back. I start by taking my colored pencil and I color a majority of the bud. I do leave the very outer edge not colored just so I have room to blend and not get too much out of the lines. Once I have the color down, then I bring in the blender pen and I just go over that area just in circular motions and this just kind of softens the color and then I also push it toward that outer stamped line. You'll see here from the front, it's a nice soft purple. I continued this process for the rest of the flowers. I did avoid coloring in the stems or the centers and the stamen. I just want this to be monochromatic and then later you'll see that the areas that I leave uncolored, they pop out just a little bit. 
One thing I did forget to mention in the beginning of this video is that Spellbinders not only has these two clubs that I am working with, but they also have many more. I will have the Stencil Club, the Clear Stamp and Die, as well as the rest of the clubs linked down in the description box below if you want to go check it out. They open up today for new members. If you're enjoying today's video and you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would take a minute to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. This way you'll be the first to know when I have a new video posted. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Here's a look at the finished colored piece. This is a super simple technique that I could see just changing the colors and making multiple cards. I brought in a piece of purple cardstock that matched the coloring and I'm going to be using the Lily Arch coordinating die on that. Now it does cut out this beautiful positive piece, but for me today I will be keeping the negative frame. I brought in some scissors and cut off the excess vellum around my arch. You will notice though that I did leave some area and that's just so later I can adhere it to the frame I just created. When I held these two pieces together, I thought the purple frame could use a little bit of texture. So I brought in my dots embossing folder and you'll see here the subtle difference that makes. To adhere these two pieces together, I will be using my ATG. Normally I would use liquid glue if I was going to adhere a frame like this so I had some wiggle room, but because of the texture with the embossing folder, I thought that the ATG or the tape runner would hold this in place a little better. Once I had the adhesive on the outside, I placed my frame around the vellum stamped piece trying to get the border around the stamped area even. Off camera, I cut, scored, and folded a white top fold card base, and now it's time to start assembly. I added my stenciled cloud piece flat down onto the center, and then off camera, I had also added some foam tape to the purple piece. This way I have a little dimension and it separates it from the cloudy sky background. For the sentiment on today's card, I'm going to be using Thanks for Your Friendship from the stamp set. And to stick with the monochromatic theme, I'm going with Jelly Donut Ink. To stamp onto, I just got out a scrap of white cardstock. I set up the stamp on there, and because I haven't used this yet, I did rub off those manufacturing oils before inking it up. Once that was stamped, I brought in the coordinating die and took that off screen to cut it out. Now it's time to finish up the card by adding the sentiment and I also brought in some sequins. To add the sentiment, I will be using Barely Art Liquid Glue. This is going to give me some wiggle time so I can try to get it as straight on the card as possible. And you'll see here I did need that wiggle time. I did have to do some adjusting. And for the sequins, I brought in some mini glue dots, added five from the top left to the bottom right of the vellum area, and then brought in my jewel picker to pick up the sequins and get those placed onto the dots. And here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I created today's quick and easy monochromatic card using the new Lily Arch Stamp and Die of the Month from Spellbinders. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget now to visit the next person on the hop by using the links in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.